All right, everyone. One of the projects that I wanted to get done today was the bananas that I have um, from the food bank. And so, what you get? I'm going to get the trash can up underneath you guys. We're out of the camera range. Okay. And we're going to get these bananas processed and put in the freezer. And the reason is because they've finally gotten ripe. And this is a perfect time, by the way, to use bananas at the peak of ripeness like this. Because they're the sweetest at this time. And so these will be used for fruit smoothies. I use them to make banana bread with. Um, I use them for a lot of different things. And so basically that's what we are going to be doing with these bananas is using them for banana bread and for smoothies and things like that. <clears throat> And so I cut them in either thirds or halves, and you can see it's just falling right off the stem. This is a perfect time. And so we are going to get these up in here. And get them in the freezer for later use. Perfect, perfect. Okay. All right. Those will be going into the freezer. Let me rinse my hands off. And, um, So I got that done and it took me two or three minutes, that's it, to get that process and ready to go. I'm gonna bring you back for the next recipe I'm gonna work on, next thing I'm gonna work on. Everyone, I'm bringing you in to show you what I'm doing. One of the recipes I'm working on today calls for brown sugar and I don't have brown sugar, but I have the items to make brown sugar. In here I have about two cups of sugar and I have backstrap uh, blackstrap molasses guys if you don't have this in your pantry you need to get it and the reason is because it is a staple that has been in my pantry when I was a kid and um, for the last several years um, because I make my own brown sugar and the reason I do that is because I get to choose what color of the sugar I want. If I want a light brown sugar or a dark brown sugar. Most of the time, this is how I do it. I don't measure things, okay, when it comes to this. Um, I do it the way my mom did it. And so here I have my mixer, two cups of sugar, and I'm gonna open up this molasses here. And I just have a tiny hole in it because I want to control, okay? And so I'm gonna start the mixer on a low. And then I'm gonna start pouring the molasses in there. I'm gonna put a little bit in there. And then I'm gonna let this go Speed it up, and let it go, and I do think that's going to be just about enough to make a medium to a dark brown sugar, and we're just going to let it go. You don't need much, but I'm going to bring you in, and I'm going to let you see what's happening in there.
At first it's going to look like clumped up stuff. But as it works into the sugar, I'm moving the camera around so you guys get a good look at what's happening. And I can continue to do what I need to do on top of it. Okay. So now I'm going to kick it up. And I want that molasses to work its way into that sugar. And it does take a while to do it. So I'm going to stop the camera right now. And you can see this process and I'm going to stop it and stop the camera. And I'm going to let this go until that molasses has worked its way into the brown sugar. And I'll bring you back and show you what it needs to look like. You just let it go though. Everybody, so I'm bringing you in to let you see that it has now turned into a nice dark brown sugar. It smells wonderful. Much, it smells much better than, let's say, the brown sugar you would get into a store. Okay? It does. It smells way better than that. And it just took maybe 10 or 15 minutes for me to do. It didn't take long to do that. Now, I did, I do want to let you know that I did have to stop the machine, scrape down the sides, and then let it keep going. But look how beautiful this brown sugar is. All right. I'm going to take it and jar it up and get it ready for my recipe. And then I'll bring you back. All right, everybody. I'm going to bring you in and show you the sauce that I am going to make. For this recipe and this is actually going to do two it's going to make a recipe that I'm going to cook today in my slow cooker and I'm going to show you that but I'm also going to use half of this to go into a freezer meal that is going to be a crock pot freezer meal for me that is going to go back into the freezer <clears throat> and so what I have in here is um I'll show it to you. Um, there it is. It is a box of that um, fruit juice that I get from the food bank. And the reason is because the recipe here calls for the juice out of the pineapple. But I am using my fresh pineapple, which has no juice. It has the juice in the pineapple, but not it's not in juice. And so I am substituting that juice for one of the cartons of juice that I get from the food bank, okay? It also calls for, we're gonna keep going. The second ingredient is a half a cup of soy sauce. So let me get my measuring cups out here. And we're gonna do a half a cup of the soy sauce. So here's my soy sauce. Oh, I thought it was open. It's not. It's not open. All right. Well, give me a second here and let me get this open. So this is going to take a minute. That soy sauce was open. It wasn't. <laughs> All right, so we need a half cup of soy sauce. So, you know what? If it's not open on the outside, it's probably not open on the inside either. And I was correct. Here we go, half a cup of soy sauce. All right, there's our half a cup of soy sauce. And this is a marinade that can also double as a 
um, the sauce that you cook in um, to make a like a sauce for the rice all right um, one third cup of uh, brown sugar and we made that brown sugar so let's get this brown sugar out that I made and we're gonna get a one-third cup all right that's not gonna work so let me get a spoon out and we're gonna spoon it into this one-third cup it doesn't say packed so I am just gonna level it off and not and try real hard not to pack it up so there's that put this up before something else ends up in it before something ends up in it and we're going to do um one fourth cup of ketchup looks like I'm going to be using up all of my measuring cups today fourth cup of ketchup sorry about the sound effects there it wasn't me it was the ketchup it was the ketchup bottle okay it was it was not me all right let's get all of that good ketchup out of there Keep reading our ingredients and go down the list because this is a marinade kind of thing. All right, that's done. Um, three tablespoons of lemon juice. What I did was is I squeezed the lemons that I got from the food bank, and that, that was three lemons. Um, two tablespoons of minced garlic. Let me get my garlic out. two tablespoons and I am just going to use just one of these okay we're gonna leave that tablespoon in there because that's what I'm gonna to use to mix everything up and it says for three tablespoons of cornstarch but I'm not putting it in here I am going to put a little bit um, Here's how I'm gonna do it. That that cornstarch just made to thicken up, thicken it up, and half of this I'm gonna freeze. So I am gonna reserve that cornstarch until I cook it in in the slow cooker. Okay. We're gonna mix this up. And this is going to be the basis for my marinade and the sauce that's going to come out at the end. All right. It calls for two pounds of pork chops. That's too much pork chops for me. So I am going to stop this filming. And I'm going to bring you over to the crock pot and show you what I'm doing. All right. Well, actually, I'm not stopping the filming. I just moved you over. 
All right, here we are at the crock pot. Let me tell you a little story about this crock pot. Everything in my house has a little story. All right, I was doing home health care for a nice lady. Um, and one of the things that I did, all right, first thing I'm going to do is get half of this pineapple in here. This is a frozen pineapple that... that I got from the food bank and you know I told you this was going to make when I did it I said this is going to make a great a pineapple upside down cake well I went into my pantry I didn't have any more um, cake mixes for pineapple upside down cake but I did I do like my pork chops cooked this way and so I was like oh no what I can do is I'm pulling these apart because they're still just a little bit frozen, but that's all right. All right, what I can do is make that pineapple pork chops that I have because I got the pineapple from the food bank, I got the pork chops from the food bank, and so let me look through that again. Let me make sure that's about half. Yeah, it is, it's about half. Now I'm gonna, I'm over in the sink and uh, I am opening up the bag of pork chops right now. And guys, I wash my pork chops, okay? I wash them, okay? And I'm deciding on how many I'm gonna put into the crock pot for you. One, two, three. I'm washing these pork chops as I go. And the reason that I wash these pork chops, people, is because when they, at the butchers, when they cut these pork chops up, um, the bones leave little particles on the pork chops, okay? And you don't want that in your food. And so... I am, I got one, two, three washed up so far. this recipe calls for a half a cup of water and so I have not put the water in the seasoning pack yet all right I'm washing my hands because I've been handling pork chops <clears throat> all right so I am going to bring over here four pork chops. One, two, three, four. There's the four pork chops. Okay. And once again, I'm going to wash my hands because I handled that. Called for a half a cup of water. 
So I am going to add the water into it now. Into the mix. It goes. And then mix I'm gonna pour in here and I'm gonna make sure I keep stirring that as I go because I want some of that garlic to end up in this one and some of the garlic to end up in the other one okay and so all right there's half there and I'm gonna put half of this before that marinade drips all the way out. I am going to get a gallon bag. Where's the gallon bag? Gallon freezer bag right here. I'm gonna get a brand new one. Off the camera. These are things that happen in my house. In the middle of something, something else, emergency comes up. Okay. It's not working. Okay, it did. Okay. Enough that I can do that. All right. So now, not only do we have this. In the crock pot, well, we also have one that's going into the freezer. So I'm going to put this in the freezer right now. And we're going to get this going. I'm going to bring over... spoon I was using. And we're going to get this mixed up. Because I want those pork chops to be um, in the sauce, okay? I want them to be coated with the sauce. Not necessarily in the sauce, but coated with the sauce, okay? They will break down. And I will be coming back and stirring them every once in a while for the next four or five hours. All right. Now we're going to put the lid on it. And we're going to put it on high to start with. And I wanted to tell you about this crock pot while I'm wiping down everything. 
and getting everything in the um, in the dishwasher. Okay, that crock pot. Several years ago, when I was a home health care provider, I was there picking up for a lady that I worked for who had lost everything. She had gone into rehab and she had gone in the hospital, came out and was in rehab and had lost everything. And uh, due to the circumstances she was in, and so I helped her get out of rehab, get into an apartment with a roommate, and purchased her the things she needed, like a, a found a um, found a hospital bed that she was in need of, and so I found it on eBay, I think it was. Anyway, it was a secondhand uh, bed, and had it delivered to the apartment, and um, I purchased her not only that, but everything she needed to get out of the rehab. She had lost everything. And so I purchased all that and uh, to help her out. And she was so grateful to me. Um, I spent many hours with her every day and this is already getting warm. So I know that this crock pot is working. That's why I got it up because I wanted to see if it worked. And um, so anyway, so I was working for her and um, helping her out, getting her all set up so that she could be more independent. Um, and, you know, get to cooking on her own and things like that, like she used to. And she was capable of doing it. She had challenges, but for the most part, she was capable of it. She needed to make sure that somebody helped her get out of bed in the morning, um, get her in bed at night, those kinds of things. But for the most part, she was independent. And so she just needed a helping hand. And so I did that for her and bought the furniture she needed. Um, you know, she needed a table. You know the things that you need when you move into an apartment. She needed those things, and so I made sure that she got those things. Well, one day, I was over at the food bank picking up her food because she qualified for the food bank, and somebody brought in this slow cooker, and they said, it works, but I have a new one because the handle broke off. And let me show you. The handle broke off and I need a new one. And so on this side, you can see there's no handle. But she said, but it works. So I figured somebody could probably use it. Well, I knew exactly who I was going to give this to. So I picked it up from the food bank and took it. over to her and delivered her food along with this slow cooker and she was just so happy to have received somebody's second hand slow cooker that she could cook in because it made it much easier for her to cook on that than it was the stove because she was wheelchair bound and all the stoves and everything in the apartment was made for somebody who could stand. It was not handicap accessible. And so this made it easier for her to cook. And so we sat down and with the food bank holes that we got, we created meals that she could do on her own from the ingredients 
that were slow cooker meals. This was one of them. And all we needed to do for her was to buy the minor ingredients, such as the soy sauce and sugar and molasses to make our own brown sugar because it was cheaper to buy the molasses and the sugar than to buy the brown sugar. So we made our own brown sugar. And anything that we needed, all right? And so we sat down and created slow cooker meals that she could make on her own using the food bank food. And we had such a blast doing that. And she was so eager to get independent and on her own. And I was so happy to help her get there. Um, so that's the story of this crock pot. She passed away. And when she passed away, she told her family that everything in the apartment belonged to me because I had purchased it for her and that they were not to take anything except, you know, the things that they, that were hers, okay? And so her family came in and took all of her personal items, okay? But left me with everything in the apartment. And so I have a whole second set of furniture that can go into a second home <laughs> stored <laughs> along with uh, other things and a lot of the dishes like the uh, spoons and things like that that I use are the spoons that I have purchased for her and those spoons came all come came from the Dollar Tree back when everything was a dollar and so that's how one of the ways that I supplied her with everything that she needed was as I went to the Dollar Tree and did a complete kitchen haul with everything a dollar. And then when she passed away, all of those things came to my kitchen. And so as I cook with those things, it's a reminder to me to stay busy, stay active, and above all, be blessed. Update you on the progress. I added some onions and some bell peppers into this um, Hawaiian pork chops. And I'm gonna try it this way. And if I like it, I'm gonna add some of my frozen onions and bell peppers into the bag that's in the freezer so that I have an, another meal, okay? Now, I'm gonna take you over here and show you what I'm making myself for lunches, all right? A completely different protein. I am doing the trifexas, the holy trinity, however you want to say it, um, which is a celery, onions, and bell peppers, and I'm sauteing those. And I am going to make a chicken soup, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to utilize last year's canning projects and food bank food, and make myself a pot of soup. All right, everyone, we have in our bowl, in our pot, we are, I'm making chicken soup, and I'm using things from the food bank. This is the corn from the food bank. Underneath that is carrots that I bought last month, I think, or the month before. It was in my refrigerator. It needed to be used up. And the potatoes are underneath that from the food bank. And so I am, I was going to make a chicken noodle soup, but I have changed my mind and I'm going to make a vegetable chicken soup because I need to use, I needed to use up the vegetables from my refrigerator. So we're going to keep going. What I am going to show you guys, and you heard it, I just unsealed it. I'm going to smell it. Yeah, it's good. It's good. All right. Let me make sure you can see it. This is my homemade canned chicken. I told you guys that I had 20 pounds of chicken that was given to me. And so one of the ways that I preserved that chicken in a way that it would 
be shelf stable is I canned it. And these are chicken legs. And I just stuffed them in a jar. And you can see that I just stuffed them in a jar. And, well, chicken legs. And it looks like there may be some chicken thighs in there too. Okay. But. I just stuffed them in a jar, as many as I could fit in there, and then put them in my pressure canner and pressure canned them for the correct time for a quart jar of um, raw packed chicken. And now I'm going to add it to this, along with all of that delicious, delicious broth. And I'm going to add about a quart of water to this. We're going to see how much I need. Okay. A little more. Okay. There we go. Now, mind you, this was just plain chicken. I did not add any seasonings or anything to it. I just stuffed it in a jar <laughs> and put it, uh, canned it and put it on my shelf. And the reason I did that is because I didn't know how I was going to use the chicken. Like, am I going to use it in a soup? Am I going to make a chicken uh, casserole out of it? Am I going to make chicken salad out of it? You're wondering, I'm washing my hands really good because I had my hand all the way in that jar. And so many of the jars that I already had before I made this last purchase, I used to can up a bunch of chicken. And so now you see the chicken. And you know, I'm telling you right now, guys, I've tried this chicken. And it is so good. It does not need anything. I mean, it does, but the chicken on its own, it tastes very good. It's much better than the canned chicken you would buy in the store. And I got it free, people. I got it free. And so now I'm going to utilize it in this chicken vegetable soup. And I'm going to add the seasonings in that I want for this chicken soup. And one of the things I'm going to add is, of course, salt. This is going to be a whole pot of soup, okay? So salt. You add as much salt as you want. And I'm going to add pepper. But I'm going to go get my big pepper. I'll be back. I'm going to go get the seasonings out of the pantry that I need. We're back. Okay, we got the pepper in my hand here. There it is. Here's the black pepper. Okay. And then... figure out how to open this. I thought I had it already open, but it wasn't. It was not open. And so, I did not have any open. And so, I'm going to open it. It is my bulk of parsley leaves, if you're wondering. I'm just going to open the corner of it. And a little parsley leaves in here okay. and then seal it back up it has a vacuum um, a ziplock seal on it and then we're going to put the lid on we're going to stir this up I want the bones in there because I still want it to make 
um, some bone broth out of the water that I put in there to supplement it along with the vegetables, all right? And so now we have ground pepper. The seasonings we have in there is, I need to add one more, hold on. We have onions, celery, um, bell pepper, carrots, potatoes, corn, parsley, salt, pepper, and now we cannot forget the garlic. I love me some garlic and stuff. Okay, so we're gonna add about that much garlic and some of the juice out of the garlic chart. I don't throw away this juice because it is flavor. All of this is flavor, flavor, flavor. And that's what you want in your soup, stews, and your dishes, okay? And so all of this is gonna go on and you know, a little bit adds up. You know, I put five little tiny potatoes in there. I put three little carrot, well, large carrots in there, four pieces of corn, and now it's probably four, four or five pieces of chicken. And so all of those little things add up when you're making a big pot of soup, all right? And now lid goes on in, and I'm going to light the fire underneath it, and I'm gonna turn this down to a medium low. And I'm gonna turn it up to a medium. I'm gonna let it start simmering and then I'm gonna turn it down and I'm gonna let it simmer for about an hour until I know that all of the vegetables are done. And once the, the, the meat is already done. So once the vegetables are done, the soup is ready. All right, everyone, the soup is ready for lunch. And so let me make sure you can see where I'm gonna put this bowl. I'm gonna put that bowl right there. Okay, close enough, all right. Because this burner is hot and so I don't want to put my bowl on it, all right. But I'm, I am gonna plate it up for you guys because I'm hungry. So this is how we plate this soup up. You get yourself one piece of corn, a piece of chicken, and then you go in with the potatoes and all the vegetables underneath. Pour it over it. Get some of that soup in there. Okay, just like that. Then, you wanna make sure that there's plenty of soup for all of the bowls that you're gonna be making out of this because look at that, okay? And then, here's a trick I'm gonna show you guys. And I do this when I plate it up and I serve it. is I take remember those lemons from the food bank? Never knock down those lemons from the food bank. I take half the lemon, put my hand underneath it so seeds don't go in there and squeeze all of that goodness down into that soup. Let me tell you what this does for the soup. Not only does it trick your brain into thinking it has more salt in it than it does, it's number one. Number two, you're getting the benefits of the vitamin C from the lemon. And last but not least, 
that lemon juice will cut the grease from the chicken. So if you don't like greasy soup, because you left the skin and all of that on the chicken, because all of that's flavor, people. And so, the more you layer flavor, the more you layer the flavors in your um, your food, the better off you're gonna be. Now I'm going to pull that chicken, and it's just falling right off the bone. Do you see that? I really want to bring you in. Let me bring you in. Let you see what I'm doing over here. You see how it just fell right off of that bone. And it's right now, right down into the chicken. I mean, into the soup. Okay? Now, there's some skin in there. You see that skin? I don't like the skin. I don't like the texture of the skin in my mouth. Okay? But I like the flavor that it gives to the soup. And so, what I'll do is I will pull that skin out just like that. And you see that, that's the, I was looking for this bone as well. When you're dealing with um, chicken legs, you have to look for that particular bone because it is, it does have a point on it. I guess I'll pull this bone out as well. And I was looking to see if there's more skin in there. But I don't see any more skin. And so there we go. There is my chicken soup for lunch today. And um, look at all the vegetables that are in there that I use from the food bank. Is that not cool? I'll bring you back later and we'll deal with the pork chops for dinner tonight. All right. Okay, you guys, I have my rice cooker going here for the rice for this dish. It is now, I have put it down on low for a little while to let it slow. And now I'm bringing it back up to high temperature. And I am, remember the recipe called for some cornstarch, okay? So this is the point where I'm going to add the cornstarch. You see it's starting to bubble, so it's starting to come up to temperature. And I am going to make sure that all the cornstarch is mixed into this little bit of water that I have here. And then I'm gonna put this in here. And we're gonna stir it up. And this is what's going to thicken up the sauce. This is how we thicken the sauce up, okay? So I put it in just like that. And then we're going to stir this in. And those, you can, I want you to see. I'm gonna do it with my left hand, even though I'm right-handed. Cause I want you to see that those pork chops are just falling off of the bone right now. And that is how tender I wanted those pork chops. I wanted them juicy and tender, and I wanted the bell peppers and the onions in here, along with the pineapple. And now I have added the cornstarch that thickens up the sauce. And we're gonna let it cook just for a minute. And this is gonna go over a bed of rice, my, my friends, and it is gonna be so good. And this is a quick, easy way to use up like four pork chops and make up an Asian, Asian-ish dish, okay? They call it Hawaiian pork chops, but it has the feel of an Asian kind of dish. Um, and you can see bones just floating around in here and the meat is just falling right off of the bones. And so, here in the South, we don't mind the bones, all right, in our food. 
it just shows you how tender the meat is. When we serve up and you see the bones like that, it just demonstrates just how tender that meat was that it fell right off of the bone. Okay? And so, this is thickening up. See that? And I'm going to now turn it off. And I'm gonna let it rest for a minute. It is very hot. I'm gonna let the rice finish cooking and then I'm gonna bring you back once I have it served up. All right, everybody, I'm bringing you in. I have my rice served up in my fall bowl. And now I'm gonna come in with, let me get a ladle because that's what I wanna use. And we're going to take a scoop of this and we're going to pour it right over the top of that rice. I wanted you to see that the rice was up underneath it. I'm going to take a second scoop and put it in there just for good measure. This is it. All right, that's what it looks like. And now I'm going to get out a spoon. We're going to give this a sample. I'm gonna, I tell you what, I'm gonna head into my office and I'll bring you along. That's what I'm gonna do. I'll see you in a minute. All right, I am here in my office with this wonderful dinner that I made in the slow cooker this morning. You saw the um, previous footage and how I worked on two different recipes today. Uh, one of them is a chicken and the other one is a pork. And I am going to dive into this Hawaiian pork as soon as I get it mixed up in the rice because I like I like that sauce all over my rice I do I like that sauce all over my rice and I already came across a bone I'm gonna stick it to the side of my soup my bowl and we are going to dig into into this hawaiian pork with a side of rice but on my in my case i put it on top all right here we go it's hot i want to burn my mouth mm. This is good. It is good. Mm. If you like sweet and sour pork, sweet and sour chicken, at, you know, at a Chinese restaurant. This, my friends, is a real close to. The only difference is, is that I did not like cut it up in chunks, batter it, and deep fry the pork chops. I did not do that. I wanted it to be a little bit of a healthier choice um, this evening. And so I didn't do any, you know, like cutting it off the bone and any of that. I wanted the bone. I wanted the flavor of the bone. Um, there is something about cooking with bone in meats that changes the flavor. It adds to, I'm sorry about that. My dog is up here trying to get to this. He, he smells it. And so he's bumping the camera. <laughs> but there is something about cooking with bone um, that is so hot that the bowl is hot I can't I can't handle it okay <laughs> I want to eat it but I can't handle it okay I can't touch it all right I also wanted to touch base with you as well um, in this video and 
let you see um, I'm gonna give you a sneak peek at a video that's coming tomorrow okay I I went shopping this month and bought myself do I want to say bought myself it's not for myself okay I enjoy a certain craft that I have not been able to um, to do in a long time like since since before I was married because I have chosen to do more important things than enjoying a craft that I absolutely love doing all right and so in my older years I have decided that I want to go back to this craft and this year for Christmas I am going to make make gifts for people in my family and so I want you guys to know that I did a team woo haul on the craft that I truly love uh, doing as a teenager like instead of doing teenage stuff I was at home doing this craft one this is one of the crafts that I used to do and so I I'm in I am looking forward to um, being able to get these projects done and ready for Christmas and so I wanted you I have it right here in my hand but you can't see it but I wanted you guys to know that I have a team wool haul coming up tomorrow that I'm going to film tomorrow and I'm going to discuss with you a dying craft in here in the United States that is something that I absolutely love doing okay one of the crafts that I love doing and so I'm going to get back into this craft and I'm going to get some uh, projects done between now and Christmas and get them ready to be packaged up for my family for Christmas and I'm gonna bring you guys along in the process of making these crafts for my family members and I'm gonna add into um, the gifts not only these crafts but other things um, as I go along so you guys, I also want to ask you guys if you could do me a favor and make sure that you share this video with people in your social media. It's just right below, right below here, okay, there is a share button, okay, and if you will click that button, and if you have Facebook, if you have Instagram, if you have Discord, if you have um, any other social media platform click on that share and send it to the people on your platform who also watch the same things that you do and enjoy the same things you do for those of you who have not um, become a member of my um, my YouTube channel I'm going to ask that you please do that because one of the projects that I am working on is I want to get to the next level and so this week, today is Monday, so I'm going to give myself until next Monday, I want to get up to 900 subscribers. It's, it's all about the subscribers for me right now, okay? And so the more that you share, and for those of you that watch this video and have not subscribed, I'm going to ask that you please do so. Um, and you can also hit the notification bells for every video that I, um, that I produce so that you won't miss any of the things that I'm doing because it's kind of a story okay I'm taking you through my life and so 
I'm not going to repeat things over and over again. So if you want to know and get a full picture of who I am, go and watch some of my older videos. All right, and there are um, playlists also that will allow you to watch certain types of videos like all of the food bank hauls or all of the using what you have cooking episodes for the pantry, uh, out of your pantry. Um, or if you want to look to see what Spice is up to, okay, you can go look at those three um, playlists down there, all right? And I appreciate every, each and every one of you who has subscribed to my channel. I do. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'm watching one or two leave, but we're still growing, okay? I'm not sure why the people are leaving, that are leaving, you know, once in a while I'll get one, okay? And so I, I don't know why they're leaving, but that's okay. As long as you guys are sharing this information and getting the word out, um, more people are coming in than are leaving and that's the ratio I need to have all right so you guys be blessed because I certainly know that I am blessed <laughs>